future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Live from Sunset Gower Studios, The Amazing Hour with Joanne O'Brien and Sabrina Johnson. There's a power here within me. There's a strength that's deep inside. If I'm willing to be willing, the field is open wide. And I know I have the courage, so I push my fears aside and allow the of truth be heard from every mountain high. I am amazing, I am amazing, there's nothing I can't do. I am amazing, I am amazing, and you're amazing too. We share a Seventeenth episode of The Amazing Hour, where we celebrate everyday superstars. We are live in Hollywood at UBN Radio Network at the Sunset Gower Studios. And we are delighted and thrilled that you are here and tuning in. I'm Joanne O'Brien. And I'm Sabrina Johnson. And before we continue, we'd like to introduce our wonderful sponsor. Oh, wonderful. Do you want to do the sponsor first or do you want me to do it? I would like for you to do it. I will talk about our sponsor first because we're just so excited. Okay, so our show is our show is sponsored by Oh, that was fun. Our show is sponsored by Von Saroyans. Von Saroyans is the top 1% producer internationally for Coldwell Banker, specializing in both residential and commercial properties. In addition to being a broker, Vaughn is a real estate attorney and has been the number one broker in his office for the past four years. And on top of that, he's a super nice guy. So you can reach Vaughn at the area code 323-497-6655 or at saroyans at AOL.com. And that is spelled S A R O I. A N is in Nancy S Saroyans at AOL.com. Uh, let's see. Um, and I just want to say one of the things if if you're listening and you can't see our 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 ad that Vaughn has, he says, Thank you to the amazing hour for celebrating the amazing human spirit and consciousness. Yay. So we are so grateful to have Vaughn as our sponsor. And if you know anyone who is looking for a home in the Los Angeles, Los Feliz, Beverly Hills, Hollywood, North Hollywood, San Fernando Valley, please uh, think of Vaughn and, uh, and give him a call. So... So now we come up to the other amazing highlight. I think Von Saroyans is the amazing highlight right too. now. But the other amazing highlight that we each have this week. What did you do this week? What was exciting that you happened had, to you this I week? I had a lot. And actually, you know what? I realized that every week we talk about the amazing highlight that we have. What I realized, it's many times not the big uh, firework event like fireworks and woohoo event. It's usually something that is really personal to me. And really is amazing in its way of how it touches me. And what has happened is um, I uh, have a friend of like 30 some years. And we now get together by going out to another friend who happens to do our hair. And we have like a ladies Sunday lounge day where she invites her best friends. And we just all lunge around and get our hair done and talk. You know, we can talk a lot. So we just have the funnest Sundays. Oh, good. Uh, you know, there's like wine and, you know, hors d'oeuvres and, you know, and cookies. And we just talk and talk and drink. And uh, for those who drink wine and talk and have our hair done and we enjoy each other's company. And it's just a small event, but it really touches me because we all get to spend time together with like you know like my hairdresser has her best friend I have mine and it's hard to get together sometimes in Los Angeles when we live such busy lives 
Oh. So it's really quite a wonderful, amazing highlight. And how about you, Joanne? Well, God, there's a lot of things, a lot of things this week. But on Friday night, I talked about this on the last show. On Friday night, uh, both Sabrina and I went to see a screening of The Letters, which will be released on December 5th. And The Letters is the story of Mother Teresa, um, the, uh, the 50 letters that she, was it 50 letters oh, or no. letters she wrote? Oh. It was many letters she yes. wrote over 50 years. Yes. This is like whisper down the lane. How you, So, um. So I went to see that, and I was so moved and so touched by her life and um, uh, by her life story and, and the acting and the Q&A we had with the director afterwards. And it was just, it's one of those films that just kind of shifted you and changed, changes you. And, um, and so, I, so that, and then my friend who was the producer of it celebrated her 50th birthday. So then we went and had a big, huge party at her house. Um, well, I say big, huge party. It was a, a, it's a huge celebration uh, and a very intimate dinner. And, um, and it's fun to celebrate each other. I just, I love to honor people that I love mm -hmm. and tell them what they mean to me. And, and uh, I just, it was a great weekend. So, um so let's see. Now, now I'm, I'm going to lead into uh, into our guest, which you're going to get to introduce. But I just want to say Very the, the letters truly, truly uh, affected me. But uh, I I had the good fortune of uh, watching the, the documentary that we're going to be talking about later. And I literally the moment I turned it on within the first minute, I was completely moved and I immediately started crying because as Vaughn says that we celebrate the human spirit. Oh, I'm going to get all watery now. Um, our, our guests tonight are true, true uh, examples of those that celebrate uh, human spirit and truly live, um, live, what do you, what am I trying to say? Our examples of, of consciousness and action. So, um, I think that's a great introduction. The only other thing I will say is that uh, Thomas G. Miller, who is the documentary filmmaker who made the film, took 14 years to make it. And Tony Sullivan, who with his partner, Richard Adams, Tony said it took most of his life to make the film about himself. Uh, the actual uh, credits that I found on the website for Limited Partnership, the movie for uh, uh, Tom, uh, was quite extensive and very interesting in that um, I'm just going to read it. It says uh, he associate produced the Sundance Award win winning film License to Kill uh, that was on POV, PBS, co-produced the feature documentary Code Black and co-produced and edited both Fender Philosophers for PBS and Camp Out for Logo. He has edited the feature documentary films Good Curds, Bad Curds, which was on Sundance, Independent Lens and PBS. Home of the Brave on Sundance, and Sex Ed, the movie. Miller produced and directed the award-winning feature documentary One Bad Cat, The Reverend Albert Wagner Story on Ovation, and feature documentary Limited Partnership, which we are talking about tonight. And in addition to that, uh, uh, he was also a pediatrician and has served as a medical consultant for Sesame Street and other film and TV series. And he graduated with a BS degree in zoology from the University of Michigan and an MD from the Medical University of Ohio and an MFA from the USC School of Cinematic Arts. And he teaches at USC and he is here with us tonight oh along God. with Tony Sullivan, who is the subject along with his partner Richard Adams of the wonderful documentary called Limited Partnership that has been getting rave reviews. I just have to say one little review I read, which I thought can was Can we, wait, 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 wait. Yes. Can we just have an applause? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. He's dying to applaud. I can yeah. tell. It. He's like, I want to say, yeah, woohoo. We're woo so excited that you're here. So that's there, our studio audience. That's our studio can't see. audience. But I love the splash review. It said about it, it said, um, the story, while not unusual, is underexposed. Limited partnership tells this story so beautifully with such poignancy that it might make even fundamentalists consider reconsider gay rights. And I thought, what a great wow. review. And LA Times gave it a great review. It's been getting great reviews. And it's a love story, and it's also a history story, especially it's 
40 years before Proposition 8 was even known. So this is history and it's love and it's everything that is important. And our wonderful guests, Tom Miller and Tony Sullivan. <laughs> Yay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, for our listeners who do not know anything, and I'm sure you've told the story a million times, but for our listeners who don't know anything about what limited partnership is, and either one of you can start, um, can you give us just a little, um, just just tell us the beginning of how this came to be, I guess starting really in 1975, but you met in 1971, so right, right. is that right? Okay. Right. Well, actually, the film um, came into being, what, in, in, in 2001, but their story, which is really the 40-year love story of their life, that's really the heart and soul of this movie. And about, uh, and, you know, the themes of the movie are, are really that love can conquer all and that it really deals with the whole history of, of marriage equality and immigration equality through the eyes of Richard and Tony. So, so tell our listeners what happened. Well, okay, in 1971 on Cinco de Mayo, uh, I met Richard in a bar called The Closet in Los Angeles. <laughs> and um, I was just passing, yes, it's, I was just passing through um, uh, Los Angeles at the time and um, going on uh, to England and then to Australia. Well, when I got to England, Richard and I were communicating on a daily basis and he asked me to come back to America to be with him, uh, which I did. Um, I was here on a tourist visa. I had a multiple entry visa and kept going in and out in order to stay with Richard. But we realized at some point in time, the immigration would wake up to what I was doing. And so we had to um, work out a way to stay together. Um, after uh, a period of time, we decided, uh, we looked at the immigration law and we saw that the law said that gay and lesbian people uh, weren't allowed into the country even as tourists. Uh, they could not be naturalized, and if they were naturalized, they'd be stripped of their citizenship and deported from the country. And uh, I remember Richard and I saying, this is an outrage. Someone's got to do something about this. And, of course, you've got to be careful when you say that because a uh, little while later we said, well, m maybe it's us because um, stereotypically we sort of fitted into an image. And um, so we said, well, let's talk about it six months later, which we did. And um, we decided to fight the issue, and um, we thought it was totally valid because we were genuinely in love. It was a general, genuine relationship. And um, so uh, we decided to uh, take on the marriage laws, and we got married in a, a church called the Metropolitan Community Church, and we were going to use the peyote uh, laws that the Native Americans have been using for freedom of uh, religion. And... Um, we had already started to move, and then in Boulder, Colorado, this uh, uh, county clerk, a woman by the name of Cleela Rorix, uh, out of the blue started to issue same-sex marriage licenses. Um, she really did a courageous act on, in doing that at that time. I, I heard later she took a lot of flack for it. Um, anyhow, we heard about this on Johnny Carson and read about it in some papers. And so we waited a month. Uh, I come from a family where there's quite a deal of legal background, and so I understand the concept of good faith. We waited a month, and the marriages hadn't been revoked. So we decided in good faith to go to Boulder, Colorado, and get married, which we did. And uh, to try and make it a little briefer, Richard applied to the immigration department uh, for me to stay in the United States as the spouse of a U.S. citizen. Because he was a naturalized citizen. He was a naturalized citizen. He was Filipino-American. Right. In fact, um, his, uh, I, I uh, f call him in my correspondence with people Richard Salunga Adams because he was born Richard Salunga right. and acquired the Adams through adoption by his stepfather. Right. Um, Richard was very proud of being Filipino. Um, Anyhow, so he petitioned for me to stay in the United States as the spouse of a U.S. citizen. And the uh, government responded, uh, and this is their words, uh, you have failed to establish a bona fide amarital relationship can exist between two faggots, mm -hmm. close quote. Um, so we took If the you're listening and you weren't sure what he said, he really <laughs> did say that because it's just astonishing yeah. and appalling. And this was 1975. 1975. 
And then in, in the movie, you said when you opened it, you handed it to the postman. You said, am I reading this correctly? Yeah, that is correct. And the postman says, yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. And then I handed it to Richard. And I, in a way, I regret I said this. It was a little unkind. I handed it to Richard and said, it's yes. your government. Yes. And I'm sorry I said that. But at the same token. Well, it was true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, so we filed uh, appeals in federal court and the case went on uh, from there. Right. And, and and since that, the movie has been made. It took 14 years, as we said. And in the movie, it shows that, um, unfortunately, Richard passed on two years ago. It'll be December. And uh, 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 your case, it looks like it's for review, right? And that yes. it looks like uh, it, there definitely will be uh, resolved uh, with uh, this good faith that you talked about. I hope so. Um Matter of fact, this is the first time I'm mentioning this. Uh, I know it's been referred on because uh, I got a letter from uh, uh, Director Rodriguez last week, who's the head of immigration, complete head of the whole thing, in which they apologize for the faggot letter. Really? And you're the very first that's people I've told wow. this wow. to. Wow. Yay, that's can a we have an applause for that? That is a woohoo. <laughs> we love our that applause. Is a yeah. That's yeah. a big, that's a big moment. Yeah, and. Uh, and uh, I finally wrote to him today, and uh, in my letter to him, I more or less said, I've given thought to the weight of what you've said, etc. And I said, uh, I decided that all I could say was thank you from my heart. And nice. that was the sum of my letter. I was very, very grateful. We had written to Ob uh, President Obama asking uh, an apology for Richard because we felt as a U.S. citizen it was wrong. And uh, evidently, the president passed it on to his head of immigration. But you are. You're the first people I've Well, we're that. excited to hear that. Thank uh -huh. you so very much. And, mm -hmm. and, and OK, so how did you happen upon this story to make a documentary out of it? Um, when I came to Los Angeles uh, to go to film school, I was a gay man, but I was just coming out. I was almost 40. And um, I grew up in Ohio. and. There weren't a lot of foreigners in Ohio, but when I came to Los Angeles and started meeting people in the gay community, a lot of them were dating and in relationships with foreign foreigners. And they were explaining to me how, as these relationships got really serious, they had no way of staying together because at that point in most of the world still, the, the American couldn't go to the other country and the, because they were gay and the gay partner from the other country couldn't come to America and live with their partner. So they were stuck. And so I really fell in love with making documentaries at USC and film school. And so I thought, well, this would be something that I really was passionate about. And I saw the power of personal documentaries and how it can put personal stories in front of issues and really help change people's opinions. And so in doing my research, I met Richard and Tony. So well, and so it's not really a, just a film about marriage equality. Yeah. It's a film about gay immigration as well. Right, yes. because Tony was applied for immigration and got rejected in 1975. And ever since then, he's been fighting to become an American citizen. And it's still not happened. He's still not a citizen. Oh, no, a resident, actually. A resident, really. Resident. Yeah, resident. Yeah. resident. Excuse resident. me, not a citizen. So, Tom, when you first started doing documentaries, you started actually, was it as a consultant for Sesame Street? And you were still a pediatrician. Right. I, um, <coughs> I was doing pediatrics in Cleveland, and I would talk to the kids and say, like, what are you watching on television? And they would say, we're watching the Smurfs and the Ninja turtles and I thought oh that's nice and then I I thought well that, that something should be done about that so I um I was fortunate that I was in a group practice and John Carroll University was right by my office so I started taking courses and got to know how to do t uh, mostly television and I wrote to Sesame Street and they were about to introduce a new character that was a baby to the show and so they hired me as a consultant on 41 shows to try to introduce this baby to, to Sesame Street. And so I became interested in that. And then you can hear my voice. It's kind of scratchy. But I um, unfortunately developed arthritis in my vocal cords a few years later and had to have a tracheotomy. And I tried practicing with the trach, but I kept on picking up all the respiratory infections of all the kids. And a pediatrician's life you talk 14 16 hours a day and I just lost my voice totally and so my doctor said um, 
I'm sorry, but you need to retire from pediatrics because you can't do this. And so naturally, I applied to film school <laughs> and to try to change my life. <laughs> Kidding, but that's what happened. A new, you wow, found a new that's voice. That's huge. So you found right. a new voice. I found, found a, a bigger voice. voice than I ever had yeah. before. Yes. Did you ever think that that was going to be your path? Um, no, I thought it would be my hobby. I always felt it was important to have other interests besides what you do, but I, I'm so happy that I developed that because I'm very fortunate. I mean, I got to do medicine for 11 years, and I really love doing pediatrics and being parts of the families and the kids, but I also love making film and the challenges of that, where every day is different, and I am also been teaching at USC for 10 years and I love working with the students and the faculty there. So I'm very fortunate that I found like all these things that I enjoy and I seem to be okay at. We have a million questions. I know you've probably got a bunch of things. I wanna know what was it like for you when, and for Richard, when you got a phone call saying, we'd like, I'd like to do a documentary on your life. Well, Richard and I, um, living in Hollywood, you'd appreciate this. Uh, Richard and I, over the years, have been approached by quite a few people uh, who saw themselves as budding filmmakers wanting to make a film on us. Oh. And living in Hollywood, you meet a lot of those people. And uh, we uh, just was never interested. And then when Tom contacted us, I forget how the initial contact was made, but Tom came over with his, uh, as at the time, associate producer, um, Leo Chang, came over uh, to visit us. And for some unknown reason, just like when Richard and I met in the closet and it was like, bang, I mean, uh, our relationship began that day, that night. Uh, it was the same within half an hour, less than half an hour, we decided, yeah, we'll go with these guys. Mm -hmm. um, I know the fact that Leo uh, was Asian definitely had an influence on Richard's decision because uh, Richard was always very conscious that uh, the Asian sensibility was never taken into consideration when people dealt with us. Um, so I think that Leo being uh, Asian had a big part and he of he was it. the producer? Uh, yeah, he, he was, was a social producer at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, Tom... Uh, Actually, the co-producer, sorry. Co -producer, okay. uh, as you can see, Tom is a quiet, gentle person, and he's actually a person of great integrity. Well, I like quiet, gentle people, and also... Uh, uh, I just connected with him. It was uh, one of those things, like uh, a little bell went, this is it. Mm. And uh, we put ourselves in his hands uh, completely. We trusted him. And a thing I've said everywhere that we've been interviewed, and I need to say again, but I'll make it brief, he had wonderful film crew, uh, wonderful film crew, not one moment of distress for us. And um, uh, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, we enjoyed working with them. There was a time when we were saying, oh, I hope they come to an end to this documentary. But that was, you know, that's a normal reaction. Everyone, even you were probably going, when am I going to be done? 14 years. Like, I did not know that 14, 14 years. years. Well, when, when I saw an interview with you and it said which documentaries affected you and you said the Up series, which is my favorite. Uh, I love the Seven Up series. And I thought this was kind of an Up series. <laughs> it, was, it was two episodes of an Up series. Yes. <laughs> The, the up series every seven years where they interview the children, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, it was a very good experience uh, uh, dealing with them, and uh, uh, I'm friends with them all, too. I mean, we see each other, and we're thrilled to see each other. And, uh, in fact, after Richard died, because we'd been working the documentary, as you now have seen the film, right up till the day he died. Yes. Um, and fortunately, the day he died, or the day beforehand, Tom gave me a clue that it was coming. You know, as a doctor, he could see it was coming. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, working with Tom and, uh, and different people who have been attached to the film afterwards actually helped me get past the initial uh, shock of Richard's death, which I'm not over yet. But it was, they, they cause all my, uh, Richard's and my closest friends all died during the AIDS crisis. Mm -hmm. So uh, none of those uh, people were around. And uh, Tom helped me also through that period. But one of the, I think, the powers of the documentary, of, of being a documentarian, is that, in, I mean, I did not know Richard was going to die the next day, but I could tell that he was near, near death, and Tony didn't, he may have known, but it wasn't hitting him. And I think one of the amazing things about the film was that I asked permission to ask them some very tough questions that day, 
And but what it did is it started a conversation between the two of them. <laughs> and so they got to, you know, talk about a lot of things that they may not have ever approached that day. And and it made Tony feel I think I mean I don't want to put words in his mouth, but but happy that they had had that conversation. Uh, separate from the film, but before Richard died, you know I, I'm one of the lucky people in uh, this sense. So often you meet people and they say, "Oh, I wish I'd said this to them. I wish I said that." Well, Richard and I had a couple of things that uh, I'm really glad were said. Uh, Richard said to me, he said, "I want you to know." He said, "I love you more now." than I ever did when I first met you. Mm. And I, I told him the same back at you, uh, et cetera. But the other one was that after Tom had gone, I went down to m my studio in the basement and there was a painting that I hadn't been able to finish for the longest time. And I it only needed one line, but it was that was essential to the painting. And I did it and while I did it, something hit me and I ran upstairs and I said, Richard, I, I said, I've got to tell you, we won. And he looked at me and said, what do you mean? I said, we won. He said, what do you mean we won? I said, they never got to separate us. Uh, and he looked at me and he said, <sighs> you're right, we did win. Mm. And then uh, a little later I said to him, and I never lied to Richard, so I've got to live up to this statement. I said to him, I said, Richard, I said, you know me. I said, I'm a tough old bugger. I said, I'll land on my feet. I, I said, you know, I, I'll take care of myself. I'll be all right. And he said, oh, I'm so glad you said that. I have been so worried about you. And he had this red blanket that he'd got at one of those Christmas things, the bag with the, the $10 gift in it. And he put it around his shoulders. In the film, he has it on. Yes. Too. He put it around his shoulders. And after saying that, he went into a med Richard was a natural meditator, went into meditation. And uh, I went that night to sleep in the living room because no he was only on oxygen a couple of days, but the oxygen machine made noise and he had lost his voice. And suddenly in the middle of the night, I heard him yell out, Tony, and literally minutes before midnight, <coughs> Tony, and which he couldn't have yelled out because there was no voice. And I ran into the bedroom. He got up out of a chair with the red blanket around him and uh, he died with me there. Mm. And uh, But after I made that statement about landing on my feet, he literally put the blanket around his shoulder and meditated himself mm. out of this world. Mm. And that was the kind of person Richard was that, you know, okay, my life is complete. I'm not going to, s and we had friends who died of lung cancer. So we know it's like, I'm not going to have that operatic production. Mm. I'm leaving. But it was uh, I'm one of the very lucky people. We had a very special departure. And frankly, given the drama of our life and all we'd been through, I think we deserved to have those conversations. No. Oh. Well, okay, so we're all getting misty here, and and um, and so I'm going to shift the tone for a moment, if you don't mind, because this is our fun part of the show, and then we'll go back to crying. Um, <laughs> oh. So, well, there's a couple of good things that, that are going to happen. We're going to we're going to try in a moment to get on the line, Clayla, who was. The, the clerk in Boulder who married you or signed the yeah. that would she married you right so yeah. we're gonna we're gonna try to get her on the line in a moment so if you're listening get ready but before we do that let's do our our fun question okay but before that let's just thank Vaughn again for being able to bring us this oh yeah 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 because okay. we really thank Vaughn for being able to support us to bring this wonderful content. wonderful great 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 yes, yes. let's thank so Vaughn go we're for it thank him and <laughs> say so. So Vaughn Saroyans, Vaughn Saroyans, if you joined us late, let me tell you a little bit about Vaughn. He is a top 1% producer internationally for Coldwell Banker, specializing in both residential and commercial properties. In addition to being a broker, Vaughn is a real estate attorney, which is a big bonus, I know, uh, and has been a number one broker in his office for the last four years. And on top of all that, he really is a super nice guy. So you can reach Vaughn at area code get a pen 323-497-6655 or at Soroyans at AOL.com and that is er, that is Soroyans at S-A-R-O-I-A-N-S 
at AOL.com. And the phone number is 323-497-6655 or at his email, Soroyans at AOL.com. So now, uh, just to, to see whether Vaughn's listening today or not. <laughs> And Vaughn is single. So if you are looking for a great guy, call him. Anyway, I'm going to pay for that later on. So let's go for a fun it's highlight a, of the show. It's a pity I'm not in the market for a house, so I'd give him a call. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so ask our fun question. I know, I know. I'm going to get in trouble, but it's fun, and I love Vaughn, and I want him to have a fabulous partner. So Okay, so... Um, so our fun question is really a great question, especially after hearing this. Uh, it is, if every time you walked into a room, a theme song played, what would that song be? So, Okay, I gave it a lot of thought. It's an interesting question. And my first reaction was uh, Je me rien, which is a, a marvelous Edith Piaf song that I used to listen to at 3 a.m. in a coffee shop called the Riviera in Tehran uh, in the early 1960s. Mm. Um, then I thought, well, you know, that's too dramatic, uh, even though I have a very dramatic streak. Then I thought... No. Of <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh, yes, I do. Uh, then I thought of Man of La Mancha, uh, the dream, the impossible dream. And which was Broadway 1960s, and I thought, no, that's too cliche. So then I thought of the theme from Julia to the Spirits, as a Fellini film, um, which, frankly, I think expresses a lot of my personality and style. But then I thought, given my life and uh, what has transpired in my life, that I went back to dream the impossible mm. dream, reach the unreachable stars. Mm. Do we have it? That's not it. Oh. Okay, that's, oh, that's okay. okay. That's okay. That's, 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 that's hold on to me. that one. That's Lots a good, of good lead into that. Oh, okay. There, there we, we go. go. <laughs> oh. There we go. We're not going to listen to the whole song. <laughs> Don't worry. That's enough of that. That's beautiful. The impossible so, dream. Tom. So, Tom. We already kind of preview. We got a quick guess. preview. Well, for me, you know, growing up in the Midwest, I love sitcoms growing up in the 70s and 80s. And so it was the theme song from Laverne and Shirley, which was Making Our Dreams Come True, because that's the source. We have. We should be in a basement apartment. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I want to have a big L yeah, right here. Uh, that's great. So uh, just uh, we now have a question. That oh, yeah, we're going to do a giveaway. People. So yes. we're going to do a giveaway. And while we are, w oh, how will we do this? Because we want we want to call Clayla first, don't we? Yeah. So No, well. What should we do first? Well, we do the we, well, do I don't, why don't we do the giveaway question? And while we're doing, while people are googling for the, the answer. answer we'll talk about Clay <laughs> we'll talk about Clayla okay so what we're giving away what t tell us a little bit we're giving you a, a poster for it's a, it's a poster of our film which, which you we have a picture of and it's a great poster so yeah so if you're watching that's it's a great it. poster and it really has all the graphics of all the th events that many events from Richard and Tony's life and really the theme of our film which is you know marriage equality and and if you're tuning in late the film is called limited, limited partnership. partnership and really it's all the historical events as well and if you want to go to and the website for that is limited partnership movie, movie limited partnership movie.com okay so okay do we have anyone in the chat room by the way Four people. Okay, great. And, you know, hey, listen, if you're listening and you're not in the chat room, could you jump in the chat room just because yes. we want to see that you're there? So, um, and here's the question. Okay, wait, hold on. Do oh. we have the phone number? Can you hold up the phone number again? I'm so sorry. I know I'll never memorize it. It's okay. It's so much fun to read the mouse pad. <laughs> All right, so 323-843-2826. That's 323-843-2826. You can win a poster. What's the question? I love the question. Okay, well, part of uh, part of our film is that not only are you experiencing Richard and Tony's life story, but you're learning some of the history that they were up against as they were trying to stay together. And so the question is, um, in what year did Anita Bryant have a pie thrown in her face? <laughs> okay, so Google yeah. that. Right, at her anti This is the year rally. that was known. 
this to was, the public. This was the year that was known to the public. <laughs> public. I'm sure she had a lot of prize <laughs> thrown in her face. She's no longer with us, is she? Yes, I think she is. Oh. Is, there, is she? Well, she might be listening. Well, oh. Anita. Watch the movie. I don't know about Watch that. Watch the movie when it comes out in June 2015. Exactly. Maybe. Well, okay, so this is a good time to ask one of those questions before someone calls. So since the beginning of your experience and you're doing the documentary, people that, we talked a little bit about this, and I can't remember what the answer, but there were people that initially had very negative responses. Who have you seen, witnessed, or watched shift over the years to uh, – have a, um, a much more conscious view? Well, I think we've seen the whole society change dramatically. I mean, when we started uh, doing what we were doing, just for saying you were gay, you ended up in jail for a couple of years, even here in California. It was a criminal act to be gay. Um, the police used to beat our community members up. Actually, even I've been beaten once uh, uh, down laneways and things. So we've moved, the society's moved as a whole. But I think the best example I can use of it, which I think is uh, a really good one, uh, and, and by the way, I'm a great believer in redemption and people changing. I really do. I think if you don't believe that, uh, there's no point to living. Um, but it's Judge Anthony Kennedy, yes. the Supreme Court Justice. I, I was hoping you would say that, yeah, <coughs> dramatic. Right. He was the uh, last judge to issue a ruling on Richard and I uh, before we had to leave the country. And it was uh, before the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. And he wrote the decision, which felt it was perfectly fine uh, to separate us. It would cause us no emotional harm or otherwise. Uh, in other words, he wrote what we consider a bad and nasty decision. And yet, when the Defense of Marriage Act came up before the Supreme Court, he was the swing vote. And he voted uh, in favor of the decision that we're all happy about. And also, on his way to getting there, uh, when the famous sodomy case came up, which was after Richard and I, he again was the uh, the vote that helped decriminalize uh, homosexual uh, acts. Um, so I think he's the perfect example of how a person grows. And he's also an example to, to other people to say it is safe to change your mind. Right. It is safe to to blossom as a human being. Well, and, and that's a great example because uh, he did start at the California uh, circuit court moved to the supreme court and in that transition obviously became a lot more um open to mm. new to new ideas and uh to new ways of thinking and in addition to that the other thing that i uh, uh, when you talked about this we do have a picture we have a few pictures of you and um richard getting married at the marriage certificate and one of the ironies was that for you to make the marriage legal in Boulder, Colorado, <laughs> which Clayla had made legal by mm. her authority as a county clerk, you had to consummate the marriage, That's and yet a, that would have been a felony act. And, uh, so, as soon as we got married, I may as well, no, I'm glad you brought this up. <laughs> Me as too. Got, I meant to, I'm so glad you did. As uh, soon as we got married, we immediately went to the place we were staying at, which had, I remember in the bedroom, a big round bed. Uh, we spent some time there and then came back to a pre conference we were having and at the beginning of the press conference I said to the press uh, in order for a marriage to be legal for immigration purposes it has to be consummated and this marriage is now consummated which of course meant that on television uh, before the world we were admitting to a criminal act um, but uh, we have a picture of that press conference yeah you do these are, uh, yes yeah. we have all these pictures and uh, yeah. it's, it was such an irony and the courage of you and Richard and of, of Sela to do this. Clela, 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 And all right. So speaking of Clela, let's see if we can get her on the phone. Now, are you able to do that? All right. We're we're very excited. We're going to try, and I hope she hasn't gone to bed already. We're going to. Oh, Clela. Yeah. She's, she's in Colorado still. Clela is the clerk who married them back in 1975. She issued the marriage she license. Issued the marriage, issued the marriage license. license. Yep. Awesome. We were married. Hello. Hi, Clela. Hi. This, Who is this? This is this is <laughs> this is Joanne and Sabrina from the Amazing Hour radio show in Los Angeles. Oh. <laughs> okay, I wasn't sure. <laughs> well, we hi, are Clela. Hello, Clela. Oh, um, hi, Tom. Tom, how are you guys? Fine, thank you. We are so delighted that you agreed to stop by and say hello. 
I friended you on Facebook today. I don't know if you you got that. You're probably like, who is that person? But <laughs> we, you know, we, we celebrate everyday superstars on this show, and and we really celebrate the human spirit. And we just wanted to honor you for having such courage and um, just standing up for what you believe in. And um, and so we're grateful that you're here. Anything you want to share oh, with us? Well, thank you. I appreciate the kind words. That's very nice. Is there anything you might want to share share with us uh, just to say hello? Uh, well, I'm sure that probably Tom and, and Tony have already given you an earful about uh, no. my... <laughs> We, we haven't talked about you. About we, my exploit. Clayla, we <laughs> saved. When I was young. We saved. We saved, we for saved you. this but, for you. We haven't spoken too much about you, but if you wanted to just let us know what it was like for you um, to do something. What it was like for me. Okay. Well, I was, I was just a young woman that got put in a... Uh, interesting place at a very interesting moment in time. I was I ran for the office of county clerk and recorder uh, and um, won the position, which was a surprise in itself. And then soon after, um, a couple uh, came to my office asking for same-sex marriage license, and uh, Tony and Richard were one of those couples. I issued six. Before I stopped, I did it under the the legal opinion of our district attorney, and um, I. A lot of people think that I must have given a, a lot of anguished thought, but the truth of the matter was that, to me, it just honestly seemed like the right thing to do, the right decision. I was um, an early participate in the women's movement. We were asking for rights, and if somebody else was asking for social justice and equal rights, it was one and the same to me, you know, at a very gut level. I couldn't see myself saying no, and that's how I made that decision. Over the years, I've always been asked would I make the decision again, and I've never wavered from saying yes, absolutely, and more so. As things have evolved over this long period of time, for about 40 years now, I often say that, thank goodness, I did make the decision because it would be very hard for me to look at myself in the mirror now if I had said no. And I'm just very happy and excited that we're going to see some closure on marriage equality soon. I certainly don't want people to think that's the end of any kind of civil rights um, battles that the gay community or any other marginalized community are facing. You can see what's happening now with the successes that women won. We thought we were done. We thought that we had had won certain rights and positions, especially with reproductive health. And the battle's on again. There's many, many smaller issues left that have to be determined with any group that does win um, a major civil rights issue. There's residual decisions that have to be made and continue to be fought for. So I'm just glad that I'm still here, that I can speak up for the issue. I very, very much want to see Tony get his his green card and to be in peace with all of the years that he spent with Richard and as a married man and in the country. And that's and one of the reasons I... That's where I stand. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why it was important for me to make this movie, though, because I think a lot of people don't have any appreciation that this is not gay, um, same-sex marriage equality is not something that's just something that's happened over the last 10 years. This has been something that's been going on for, for over 40 years. And the pioneers in that, people like Richard and Tony and Cleela, the people need to know about that, especially young gay and lesbian um, 
people and the community and and everybody they need to know and realize that these things don't just happen that real people gave their lives and their energies to make these things happen and now we are appreciating all their help and i'm so glad that they're finally getting to be seen and people know who they are well, well, Cleela, we have to go, but before we go, I just want you to t tell everybody the answer that you gave to the man who came up and said, if you're going to marry same-sex couples, then you marry me and my horse. And what did you tell that man? <laughs> this was great. Yeah, I took the information about his, his horse, Dolly, and when he told me she was only eight, I just put down my pin and said, I'm sorry, she's too young. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. that is wonderful. Well, we thank love you, you for that. We think <laughs> you are amazing. You are amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Cleela. Thanks for watching. All the right. Call. That was a special treat. We weren't planning on that treat. until right before the show. So we just feel so mm -hmm. excited. Do we have anyone calling in? Do we have anyone? Okay. No. Uh, we have, it's sometimes, sometimes people we try to call in and they don't get through, and, and um, sometimes some people might not know the answer that are on there. Right. We'll see. Um, but some, a lot of times people will write in later on, and then we'll, we'll get yeah. the answer that way. So if you were – do you have I, – I have a couple questions. Do you have a burning question right now that you wanted to ask? If, if, you, were, if you were to say to, – to share something with – any person or group out there that is struggling with s stepping, standing up for themselves, because that's a big deal to to speak your voice and know that you deserve and you matter. And you, 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 you what would you say? What would you offer? Um, I was asked this question in San Francisco uh, by a Filipino television company. And the answer I gave was actually addressed at that time to a young, imaginary young Filipino or Filipina. And um, I'd said that they should do what Richard Salonga had done. And that was that if he felt he was right, and if we both, but uh, I used him as an example. If he felt he was right, uh, to have confidence in that and to not allow people to run roughshod over you. Mm. And even if it means uh, taking an unpopular stance that if in your mind and heart you're doing what is right, it's worth doing. Um, the benefits you experience psychologically as a human being in taking that stance, and I can speak now from personal experience, regardless of the, for want of a better word, crap thrown at you, are quite amazing. You learn things about yourself uh, that you didn't know, and it's a, uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to look at your life and say, I didn't waste it. So uh, for anyone that's feeling screwed over um, uh, and feel it's unjust, don't indulge in blaming yourself, which is what people do. Recognize the injustice comes from somewhere else and put all the blame for that injustice on the source, not on yourself. Mm. Thank you for that. Thank Did you. Yeah, for, for me, I think, you know, I spent many, like half my life being invisible. I knew who I was and was afraid to say that I was gay. And, and as I became a documentarian, I saw the power in that. And I realized that one person can make a difference. One person can make a huge difference. And that's what I'm hoping for this film is like, we are almost there with um, marriage equality and immigration. We're so close, but we're not there yet. Only 19 states in the District of Columbia have marriage equality right now. And this film and Richard and Tony's story can make a difference in changing the culture. And hopefully by June of 2015, the Supreme Court will make a ruling, hopefully with Judge Anthony Kennedy's help, Justice Kennedy's help. And marriage equality will be everywhere in this country. And I just want to, I just feel like I can be part of that and, 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 we one person can make a difference. Yay! Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I just want to say uh, your movie will be out on PBS in t June two, 2015, 2015. So that's great. And if someone wanted to go see it at a festival, what festival's coming up? Um, it, it's coming to be in Aspen. It's playing in Taiwan. It's playing in Louisville. Um, 
it's going to be in 35 different festivals over the next two months. And if you go to our website, limitedpartnershipmovie.com, or our Facebook page, um, www.facebook.com slash limitedpartnershipmovie, you can see all the different festivals as they appear with the dates and everything. Great. Well, we're so delighted. Yeah. To have had you on the show and to have a special announcement that no one heard before, mm -hmm. yes. heard on the show, and to have Clela as a as a call in guest, Thank which you. we haven't had before. Um, so we're we, we really do have to wrap the show up. And before we, we I've got to have yes. another shout out to yes. to Vaughn Saroyans, um, <laughs> top one percent producer at Coldwell Banker. Um, who is both a, a residential and commercial property uh, uh, real, realtor, and uh, he has uh, he's also a real estate attorney, and he has been the number one broker in his office for the last four years, and he's a really great, super nice single guy. So you can reach Vaughn at the area code 323-497-6655. 323-497-6655 or at Saroyans, S-A-R-O-I-A-N-S at AOL.com. Saroyans at AOL.com. So, um, and so the last thing that we do is it's Gratitude Tuesdays. And so I'm just going to shout it out. Thank you so much, Deanne Estelle Vicari, Vicari for introducing me and Joanne to Tony and Tom. I met her at a dinner party, and she made this introduction possible and the show possible. So thank you, Deanne, very much. So that I think that's our combined gratitude yes. for, from the two of us. Do you have anything that you would like to say that you are grateful for? Oh, I'm very, very, very grateful for the life that I had with Richard. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing can exceed my gratitude for mm -hmm. that. It's it's just wonderful. And I'm very grateful for, for years I could not get funding for this film. And my yes. friends and my family and my colleagues, they all helped out and worked for free to get the story rolling. And I am so appreciative to them. All right. Well, we're excited. Uh, next week, our guest is Rico Adair. Oh. Rico Adair um, is a clothing designer, and yes. you, and, and his uh, he designs everything from recycled articles. Really cool. Really, really cool stuff. He's really Facebook. cool and hip. So look up Rico R I C O Adair A D A I R. You can look him up on Facebook and join us next week. And maybe we'll have some articles of clothing. So you'll have to watch so that you can see them. Yes. And that's it. Okay. Thank so you. thank you so much. Thank you you thank are. You. Amazing. Yeah. That I am amazing. amazing. I am amazing.